Hey, what's up guys? It's Matt with The Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk all about speed strength. So we're gonna specifically talk about how to develop strength that is specific to the context of speed. So this is gonna be really important for athletes, change of direction athletes, linear sport athletes. They're gonna be focusing on max velocity sprinting. If we wanna develop speed, we have to understand the concept of strength speed. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So let's start off with a quick review of the force velocity curve. So what you'll see here is that we have high force on one side of this, and that would be the max strength part of this where power lifters kind of live. And then on the very other side of this, we have speed. And that's the area where max velocity sprinting occurs or really fast change of direction occurs. And then we have a lot of variables in between. Now we're gonna, for this video, focus on speed strength because this is a really important physiological quality to understand if we wanna train athletes who perform on the bottom end of this force velocity curve. So you can probably understand that true power lifters or true bodybuilders that train specifically and optimize those aspects of performance are relatively unathletic in the context of speed and change of direction. Now this becomes a problem whenever that training methodology of power lifters or bodybuilders gets adopted by people who wanna be athletic. So understanding speed strength is really gonna allow us to dive into the specific physiological adaptations associated with that part of the force velocity curve where athletes are gonna to have to perform. So let's talk about some numbers here. If we're doing a maximal strength lift, the speed of that barbell may be less than about 0.5 meters per second. By contrast, training in the speed strength zone is typically anywhere from 1.0 to 1.5 meters per second. So if you're trying to visualize this, 0.5 meters per second is like a slow grinding, one, two, three rep type of squat, whereas about one meter per second is the minimum speed required to actually successfully complete a snatch. So the bar has to be a lot faster to actually be able to get under the bar. So when we think about moving at one to 1.5 meters per second, that's a significantly higher bar speed. So now let's compare the adaptations that we get from training with either of those methods. So if we're training at the high end of the force velocity curve, training maximal strength at that 0.5 meters per second, the adaptations associated with that are gonna be really high force output, but at a really low velocity. So the adaptations are gonna be slow grinding strength improvements. If that's your goal, then you're doing the right type of training. But what we see is a different set of adaptations associated with training at higher velocities. So training with that 1.0 to 1.5 meter per second bar speed, we have a full set of neurophysiological adaptations that we don't get with low velocity training. Things like changes in type two muscle fiber recruitment patterns, potentially a shift from type two X to type two A muscle fiber types, changes in the amount of acetylcholine receptors and the activation patterns of our type two muscle fibers. So training at higher velocities will get us adaptations that are specific to performance at higher velocities. Now there is going to be some improvement across the board from improving absolute strength. So I don't wanna discount doing some slow one rep max type training. Based on some of the research from Tudor Bampa and periodization books, there is some transfer of absolute strength to all other metrics down the line. It's kinda of like a base. But that said, there's still specificity of adaptation. So we kind of have to have that base of maximal strength, but then build on its specific qualities, especially as we approach the sports season and get more specific with our training. All right, so let's talk about practically how we would actually assign load, sets, reps, that kind of thing for this type of speed strength training. So based on some research from Jendaka, which I'll link in the description below, the optimal load for this speed strength training is probably somewhere around 40% one rep max. Now you'll see this vary anywhere from 25% one rep max to around 60% one rep max type loads, but optimal seems to be about that 40% mark. Now, why is that? It's because there's kind of a trade-off here. So if we think about why that is, the equation for force is mass times acceleration. And to optimize that force equation, we typically wanna use really high mass, so heavy loads. But when we think about power, we're now talking about force divided by time. So that 40% seems to be about optimal. If we go too low, below 25% one rep max, we really don't have enough mass to create force. And if we go too heavy, then the time factor slows down. So around 40% one rep max, maybe as low as 25% and up to around 60% is really where we wanna to load to optimize speed strength. 
Some examples of exercises you may program for this could be Olympic lifts like clean snatches or even variations of cleans like clean high pulls. We could do loaded jumps with barbells, dumbbells, medicine balls, or we could do other medicine ball throws, overhead throws, backwards throws, broad jump throws. There are a ton of examples of exercises that we can use. We just wanna make sure that we can load it enough that we're still able to do the full range of motion movement, that we're ideally not slowing down at the end of the movement. So movements that end in jumps or open-ended pulling, that's really a good movement pattern for loading in this way and potentially even accommodating resistance. So adding things like bands or chains that make the lift harder as we end the repetition where we would typically slow down, that accommodating resistance potentially allows us to accelerate more through the end of the lift and could match the needs of this speed strength a little bit better than just plain free weights. And you may also hear the term dynamic effort thrown around as a way to improve speed strength. This is really just terminology and you can use any system that you want once you understand the science and the physiology behind why we would do this type of faster training with moderate loads. So go ahead and explore all the different systems and methods that are out there, but hopefully this video lays the context of some of the science and the physiology that underpins it. If it was helpful for you, go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe so you don't miss future videos. You can follow me on Instagram at The Movement System to learn more, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.